Hello cookies, it's Siri, I'm back and today I'm going to give you my tips and tricks on how to deal with a breakup. This was a video not requested by Emma, but Emma, I see you and I saw your comment and I replied to you but I told you that I didn't want to just reply in a comment. Since I kind of have some experience in the topic, I might as well make a video for you and for all the other cookies, guys and girls that basically deal with a breakup or just want to know how to comfort their friends or family members or basically anyone who is going for something similar. I'm not a love expert, I'm not a sex expert, I have read lots of books but I really love relationship books as in books about women, about men, about how we're different, how we're similar, how we interact, the power of seduction and all those things really I believe they're very interesting and I really like observing people maybe that sounds kind of creepy but I really like checking how people interact with each other relationships I think it's very fascinating so in this video I'm going to combine my personal experience and the things that I've learned uh, by listening to people by looking at people and my tips might not apply for everybody maybe some of my tips you're going to be like what the hell Eri? like are you serious and I'm gonna be like yeah I'm serious but it is basically my own tips and it's okay to disagree with them I'm going to go through a little bit of um, background story of me and my breakup so you know where I'm coming from I consider that I've had four serious relationships the fourth being this one I'm in with John you know this one here is the fourth and hopefully the last one and I have had three serious relationships before that so one with a German dude, one with a French dude and one with a Finnish dude and you know they all ended up with breakups so the first one he left me because he got a job offer in another country the second one I think it was mutual and the third one it was kind of mutual and I've had um, small relationships I guess in between where it was like oh I'm like oh no let's finish this or like the other person was like no let's finish this so basically I've kind of had a few of these and I'm 24 so I've had long relationships short ones and everything in between my very first tip is basically to take some time for yourself and by that I mean just cry 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 feel miserable feel horrible it's really like when that stuff hits I like, poof and you're just so heartbroken the best thing is to just let it all out because I personally feel much lighter after I've cried if something bothers me or makes me sad and if I feel like I've been bottling up my feelings in general even if it's not linked to a breakup but if I just feel down for a while in general I feel much much better after I've cried so I just watch something sad or listen to some music there are some songs that always make me cry for some weird reason even songs that are not particularly sad so what I suggest is just cry get it out scream in your pillow feel miserable just take your own time it might be an evening a day two days a week I don't know if it happens to you but when I conceal my emotions and when I try really hard not to cry I have this lump in my throat that is very painful you literally feel like like you have some sore throat or something and I've googled it it happens to many many people it's because you really just have to let it out in order to feel lighter to feel at peace and just to feel better when just all the emotions have been pouring out you kind of like cleaner emotionally you feel lighter and you just kind of like okay now I'm just a bit more relieved so my second tip is not to be on social medias Facebook Twitter Instagram maybe Twitter is okay but all of those that display your life and if you're the type of person that has your relationship on Facebook it is even more important because you already have to deal with that and then now some people feel like they have to delete all their photos and um, I don't know location appearances with their other half on Facebook and all the photos on Instagram and then if you do that people are going to ask hey what happened what's going on and you're going to have to explain yourself to many different people 
and you're just going to have to go through the pain over and over again of telling people that oh I just got dumped or oh I just ended my relationship and even just going one one by one through all the photos through all those things it's just painful you can do that later on when you feel much better you don't need to go through that extra pain of having to deal with people on social media asking you what the hell happened if you're still together if you're not together where are your photos and there's also this thing maybe you're going to disagree with me but this is something that i really noticed and that i personally feel maybe i'm just super lame and that's okay but i feel like having your relationship on social media is something that you should be proud of and that we usually proud of i am very proud of my relationship and most people usually are because you wouldn't be in a relationship if you thought your other half was completely lame you know if you are with someone you probably think they're amazing so you're proud of being with that person the other side is that if you end up breaking up you already feel bad and some people i do feel like kind of a sense of failure i feel a sense of failure and i hate failing at things i like succeeding i've always been someone who is if i'm doing something i want to be the best i want to succeed i want to to be on top of things so when i feel a relationship i feel like a failure and instant instant eh, instant news in if I fail my relationship, people are probably going to think I'm a failure. They're going to be like, oh, oh, she just failed her relationship. That means she might not be good enough or whatever. And all of these things might be all in my head because I'm paranoid and weird. But thinking about all those extra stuff is just too much sometimes. I'm just like, okay, this is over. It's over with this relationship. I've only had one relationship that was on Facebook. And, you know, when I took down the relationship status, I felt very ashamed of myself, I know there's nothing to be ashamed of. People ask me, hey, what's going on, are you not with him anymore? Oh, are you single now? Congratulations! It's just so many damn things and I had to delete many things. So, off social media. Number three tip is to just do whatever you like for a while. This tip is just to please yourself the way you like the way you want so when i experienced my breakups all of them actually i think i spent a week just eating junk food so it was funny because i felt so horrible and so heartbroken and so miserable that i couldn't eat that much every time i have a breakup i couldn't eat but the few times i was eating it was always junk food because i found comfort in ice cream and pizza pizza is like the best it's seriously the best ever for me and then chips so i was just basically making some weird like pizza and then chips and then just maybe some like um, creme fraiche or some cream and just roll them and just gulp them while watching Game of Thrones and once upon a time I feel very oily and greasy when I eat junk food but somehow I feel like it helps a little bit so if you're into that stuff then just grab cookies ice cream whatever and eat junk food or if you are the type of person that really doesn't like junk food you don't have to force yourself of course just eat some fruits your favorite fruits your favorite vegetables maybe if you have a fruit that is usually very expensive like i know in madagascar kiwis are really expensive seriously expensive my mom would buy kiwis maybe once every two months and we would share and each get half a kiwi that's how expensive they are there buy some kiwis even though they're expensive in your area it doesn't matter just just eat drink watch things that you like series youtube videos just do things that you enjoy all the time this next tip can be linked to the previous one and it is to find a hobby or something you like and really pursue it it doesn't have to be in the quest of becoming professional like if you like ballet it doesn't mean that you're going to dance ballet in the russian palaces next month or anything like that it doesn't have to be that grandiose but what i did for example was when I broke up or was in the process of breaking up with my Finnish ex, the most recent one, I started to get into nail art. 
I was so good. I was so good. And okay, maybe I was not that, that good, but since I come from a background where I barely did anything to my nails, I started to watch nail art tutorials, check out some nail art blogs, and really just create some designs. Next tip is to freaking get revenge. There is this quote that one of my classmates called Willia, my classmate from film school, it was after either my German dude breakup or my French dude breakup. I was so sad at school and I looked freaking miserable. And she asked me, Yuri, what's wrong with you? And I said, I just got dumped or I just dumped him or something ended and I was so sad. And she said, you know what? Get revenge. And I was like, Okay, that's a weird tip because usually revenge is considered negative. The best revenge is happiness. That's how you get revenge, happiness. And I was like, yeah, that quote speaks to me. So if you know me, I usually don't like quotes. I think quotes are just so lame and it's like life is like a box of chocolate. No, life is not like a box of chocolate. It's life. It's completely different stuff. and. Maybe you could say, Eerie, have a little bit of imagination, but it's just just like this thing that hot water softens the potato, but <laughs> hardens the egg. I mean, it's so hilarious. And when someone tells me that, I'm just like, but I'm neither a potato nor an egg, so what am I supposed to do? When I heard that, I was like, I'm freaking going to be happy. I'm going to be happy and show you that I can be happy without you. I can ha be happy by myself. I can be happy with other people. And I can be happy with a future boyfriend that is not going to be you. Take that. Still on the topic of revenge though, the less nice and inspirational is to not literally get revenge, don't do that, that's not so nice, but to become a better version of yourself and think, you know what, I'm going to be so freaking amazing, I'm going to be so fit, my makeup is going to be so on point, I'm going to be so smart, I'm going to travel so much, that you will freaking regret not being with me anymore. It might not be such an inspirational tip, but let's be real here. Let's seriously be real. How many of you have never felt like I'm going to become hot, I'm going to become awesome. And when you really feel like now you're freaking awesome, you think about your exes and you're like, I'm so damn awesome. You probably regret not being with me anymore. It is petty, it is childish, but sometimes we kind of need that, you know, slight pettiness. Use that to build yourself up. The reason might be a bit wrong to try to impress someone that dumped you, but in the end, the outcome for you is good, so use that. This one right here is so very cliche, and I wish I didn't have to say it, because when I go through a breakup, I hate when people tell me this, because I know it's true, and knowing that is not going to help me. So the thing is, time heals everything or almost everything. Every time I had my breakups, at least one thing that I always knew, that I always, always knew was that it's gonna get better. I'm gonna get happy again. I'm gonna meet someone amazing in the future. I'm going to be able to survive. Someday in the future, I'm going to think about this relationship without feeling sad, without feeling bitter, without feeling angry. I always knew all those things, even when I was younger. And unfortunately, I cannot guarantee you that it's going to be fast. Maybe it's going to be super fast. Some people heal in one week after a 10 years relationship. And I'm just here like, wow, I wish I could do that. I heal sometimes quick, sometimes slow, depends really on what I'm doing, but it's usually not that quick. So I just deal with it and I know that it's going to get better. So this tip is just to let time heal you. Just let time heal you every second, every minute, every hour, every day. Even if you don't feel like it, you're probably already getting better and better and better. So just trust in time. Travel or travel. I just wanted to kind of sound cool by saying travel, but travel, it really, really helps. And if you see those super inspirational people on Instagram, on YouTube, they're taking a vacation, a spiritual vacation here and there in the middle of the forest for six months or with some monks or whatever, 
You can do that if you have the money, but not everybody has the money. I definitely did not have the money in my previous relationships. I did travel a little bit, but it was never something that was long enough or fancy enough for me to heal completely. One thing that I did was to go to new locations. I would go to the metro station, the main metro station, and just pick some random place, close my eyes, and then just point somewhere. And if I've been there before, then I would try again. And until I find a place, a metro station stop that I haven't been to before, then I just go there, get out, walk around, and figure myself out. You feel so proud of yourself. You feel so adventurous. You're like, wow, this is a new area. What's there? Are there nice clothes shops? Are there nice restaurants or coffee shops? Oh my God, there's this really cute park there with this pond. It's just so peaceful. I never even knew that there was a park like that in this country or in this city. You just go discover things and it just feels so interesting and so fun. You always learn, even if you just go to another street or uh, 10 bus stops away from where you usually stop and you're just like, whoa, where am I? I've never been here before. Oh, interesting. There's learning opportunities everywhere. And knowing that you can do these things by yourself are going to make you feel much better and feel like, yeah, I mean, I can go to a new coffee shop with him or with her, but I can also go by myself. It's fine, it's fun, and it's it's me being kind of an Indiana Jones. This is not really a tip, but I just wanted to say that most videos that you see talking about breakups, they say, talk to your family, talk to your friends, to those of you who don't have those people and are sick and tired of the first tip always being, talk to your family and talk to your friends, because every time I see videos like that or blog posts, I'm like, but I don't have family, I don't have friends, what am I supposed to do then? So now I'm telling you, you can definitely get over a breakup even without family and friends. If you feel like you need the help, of course, go ask for the help. But for those of you who are in the same situation as me, you don't need them. You can heal perfectly fine by yourself. And in some circumstances, it's actually even easier and faster to heal when you're by yourself without everybody just giving you random advice and you just trying to figure out your own feelings while trying to get all the advice in you just get confused last but not least avoid comfort sex and rebounds now before you all scream eerie are you seriously going to talk about those here Yes, when I look at my stats, more than 91% of you are over 18. If you're under 18 and feel like you're not prepared for sex talks or things related to that, thank you so much for watching until now and I will see you at my next video. But if you're interested, if you're over 18, then yeah, now I'm about to get real with you. Don't do comfort sex and rebounds. What I mean by comfort sex is one night stands or friends with benefits or sleeping with your ex, 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 as in like your previous ex or like your previous previous before the one that dumped you or the one that you just dumped. The reason being is you're going to feel even more miserable. Been there, done that. You feel like crap when you do that because you kind of know that you're not doing it for the right reasons. You're not doing it because you're horny or because you want to have fun or because you like that person or because you're in love with that person. You're doing it to try to forget the other dude or the other girl, to try to occupy your mind and you think that, oh, if I do that, I'm going to not think about something else to get some comfort because you miss that intimacy, but it's not in a healthy way. And let's be real here, you're also doing it as a revenge toward your ex. You're going to feel lesser and it's just going to really not help your healing process because you're going to feel bad about yourself. You're going to be like, this is not even the person I want to be with tonight. This is not how I used to have sex with my partner. This is so different. There's just so many thoughts that are going to come when you're hurting and they're not going to be positive thoughts and they're going to bring you down. As for rebounds, that's self-explanatory. I've been someone's rebound one and a half times. One and a half times because once I was a proper rebound, I was really just a rebound and that sucked. That hurt my feelings, that made me pissed. I was 
that was really not nice. Second time was not the proper second time, so I say one and a half because he was into me, but he was still into his ex, so he had to deal with his emotions that were jungled up between her and me, so I was kind of a rebound and it didn't really work out in the end because I was just like, what the hell? I know you like me, but I still feel like a rebound, so no. So that sucked. And you as well having a rebound, you know that you're going to hurt that person's feelings. You. You know it. If you use someone as a rebound, they're going to hurt when they know they're rebound and you know that what you're doing is not nice towards them. You know it. It's not like, oh no, it's okay. I'm, I'm really just dating this person even though I broke up with my ex last week or yesterday. It's okay. I'm moving on so fast and now nah, no. You know what you're doing and that will bring you down, that will make you feel like a horrible person and that will hurt that other person, which is really not a nice thing to do. So none of you is going to win. On the other hand, what I always tell myself is if this didn't work, then the one is still out there somewhere. I mean, can you believe it? The one is still out there somewhere. You're still going to have that first text or like seeing them for the first time, exchanging numbers, your heart beating, that excitement, that anticipation, the first day, the first holding hands, the are we going to kiss tonight, the first kiss, the first time having sex, the first everything, the first time you say I love you. There's still all of that in store for you and those moments are precious. They're really, really, really precious. So if you're going for a breakup, think that you still have those moments to live while people like me that are in a relationship, they're gone. They're gone forever. No more first times. I mean, there's still some first times, of course, to come like John and I's first time moving together to a new country or buying a house together or getting a fur baby together. Of course, this does. but. All first times are precious and the ones at the start of relationship are really precious. So you, who has been dumped or who dumped someone, you're lucky because you have all those first times ahead of you and that's just going to be freaking amazing. And that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then leave me a thumbs up. And like I said before, subscribe if you don't want to miss the upcoming videos. I'm going to try to make more of these. So until next time, I will see you cookies at the next video. Bye bye.